In a world where crime is rampant, corporations are at each other's throats and homelessness is rampant, who is there to help the everyday man and woman just wanting to live their corrupt free life within the beautiful neon city? We'll wonder no more as the NCPD are there to assist you and trust me, they are totally not corrupt. For only a small charge to your account, you can report an ongoing crime, be saved from a robbery and might be saved from a cyber psycho taking over your area. These mostly kind officers like their city so much that they will roam it putting some people's minds at ease but if you are to look at them funny then they will with a smile on their face beat you to a pulp in the name of beautiful justice because nothing says freedom more than the men in blue giving you a good beating for just looking in their general direction nice city is truly safe thanks to these amazing hard-working totally not corrupt freedom loving officers and because of that everyone knows the name of the night city police department and it's safe to say that at least 30% of the population of Night City love the work that they do. But I hear you asking already, what do they do exactly? How did they set up? What roles do they serve within the community? And what has changed for them over the years leading up to 2077? Well, in today's episode, we will be exploring this fantastic, totally not corrupt organization and how they are the life and soul of the grand city of Night City. In today's episode, we will be exploring the fantastic service that the NCPD gives to the people of Night City. And speaking of a fantastic service, that brings us on to this week's genuinely fantastic sponsor, The Spoke Post. The Spoke Post is a membership club where you receive a box of awesome every month. The idea is to introduce members to cool new products of which 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right in the heart of the US. These products can include outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing and much more or even live oysters if you're into that. And indeed, it's what you are into that's important to Bespoke Post. When you join, you'll fill out a preference quiz and then Bespoke Post will put together a box that is, well, bespoke to you, which changes each month. With Bespoke Post, you'll get to preview your box before it's sent so you can see everything that you'll receive that month. But if you are feeling you want something a bit different, you can always swap your box for another one. Or if things are becoming a bit tight, you can skip a box and not be charged. The membership is entirely flexible and you only pay for what you want. I personally love the Weekender box which includes a brilliant quality bag perfect for taking on those long days out on camping trips and walks or for just carrying all your goods to work. And the other box named Hitcho which includes a DIY hot sauce kit, an artisan made molcajete and a stainless steel taco rack holder. But there are so many others I'd like to get such as the split box containing this amazing filled hatchet and the scorch box containing five different hot sauces and the Japanese use miso glaze to tickle your taste buds. Every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside but costs you only a fraction of the value and you can get a further discount of 20% off your first box using the discount code wisefish20 at checkout with all of the links in the description below. I want to thank Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video but for now let's get back to the lore behind the NCPD. For years starting from 1994, around the same time as the data crash, the NCPD were your standard police service within Night City, offering up every standard service you'd come to expect from the boys in blue. With so much going on within Night City and throughout all of America, these officers were massively overworked, criminally underpaid, and stress ran throughout the ranks as they desperately tried to combat all of the gangs plaguing the city, as well as things like random moments of street crime and even trying to clear up up the homelessness problem. With so much to do, their main headquarters would be located in the heart of the city within Little China by the year of 2020, setting up a maximum security facility that was seen as equal to any federal prison in the US, which was constructed on the site of the original Southside Police Precinct Number 3. A quite unique police headquarters this was as well, as within the basement of the facility was a fallout shelter, which also contained an armory and weapon repair station 
a 70 foot firearm range and four evidence storage vaults as well as many other state of the art pieces of equipment and rooms to make sure they had everything they needed to battle all forms of crime in their precious city. And during the year of 2020, NCPD was successful in keeping the downtown streets fairly safe. Although it must be said that due to Night City's extremely lax views on the public owning firearms, a lot of their problems were solved by the good citizens who wanted to take matters into their own hands. So a lot of the time the NCPD didn't have to get involved at all. It is unknown what exactly happened to the NCPD in general during the years that followed 2020, but considering how many times corporations, gangs and other parties got involved in the city, it was pretty safe to say that their whole presence certainly dwindled, especially during the fourth corporate war. And by the time of the unification war in 2069, the NCPD really were just a shadow of what they once were, trying desperately to control everything going on within their city. But with Militech and the NUSA moving into their borders, there wasn't much a city police department could really do if there was to be a full-blown invasion. Luckily for the NCPD, they did not have to bring in their best ranks and equipment as Arasaka came to save the day and pushed Militech and the NUSA back, bringing an end to the war, bringing power and safety back to the people of Night City. As the 2070s got into full swing, the Pacifica region reached the boiling point. Now without all of its investors, gangs flooded it in their masses, making the most out of its high quality clubs, accommodation and building resources that were just left there completely abandoned. The NCPD saw this as a criminal offence and knew they had to try and step in to secure everything in the area that was once going to be one of the best tourist destinations in North America. But unfortunately, as the NCPD started to enter the Pacifica region, they saw how many gangs had taken the area, which included ex-Militech soldiers, and realised there was no way they were going to be able to take it, seeing that it would just end in a complete bloodbath. With this, the chief of the NCPD, most likely Claudia Feldman at the time, ordered the withdrawal from the area and with it also got the Night City Council to shut down all city services there to force the locals to leave, which also turned out to be a complete failure. At some point during 2074, Cyber Psycho's presence started to get worse for the people of Night City, with regular attacks occurring in the heavily populated areas. One specific event happened within Kabuki, which went on to cause the death of three citizens. As Night City and the NCPD started panicking about these events, the NUSA got involved once again, with President Rosalind Myers offering her Militech services to help them clear up their problems and bring back order to the city once again. However, the NCPD commissioner saw right through this offer, knowing that if they accepted their help, they could take over their city from within and Night City would lose its independence and become an NUSA state. And with that, sharply criticised Myers' plans and outright refused her help, stating that the NCPD and Night City could handle it on their own. Two years following, in 2076, it became clear to the Night City Council that the NCPD was simply not profitable at all in their eyes. It was costing an absolute fortune for the government and in the end, crime was still as large as ever. Something needed to change and fast. With this, the NCPD was transferred to private ownership to make sure it could finally bring in some eddies to help Night City's funding. At this same time, the chief of the NCPD would go on to be replaced by a data term sales executive named Jerry Falter, who to many who would see him on TV or about would think he was a smart businessman, but behind the scenes he was incredibly corrupt. Doing regular dealings with gangs and even being in a close friendship with the leader of the main gang of the Bargast from the Pacifica district named Kurt Hansen. Rumor had it that at some point in his role on the post, Jerry could inspired with Maelstrom gang member Alexandra Seitovsva to lure officer Reggie Loeb and his partner into an ambush for being too proactive in their investigations and also organising the elimination of homeless people with scavenger member Yelena Sidrova in a development project in Northside. But Jerry didn't just stop there. When becoming the police commissioner, he would also go on to save money the best way he knew how, by getting rid of half of the officers, reducing patrols and ordered the beat cops to prioritise writing tickets only leading to even more crime on the streets. With now half of the police gone due to severe budget cuts, Jerry would go on to launch a drone for cops replacement program, launching more AI officers, meaning he could have crime control without having to really pay anything for it. And on top of that, would set up a new 5 euro dollar per minute phone charge for anyone 
making 911 phone calls to make sure the phone lines weren't jammed with unwanted calls and also make a fortune out of people by keeping them on hold or not really helping them when on the line. Private prisons became a thing as well, helping bring more money into the NCPD and by the end of the year, their finances got better but still not great, clearing some of their debt and getting them one step closer to clearing it all. This looked okay for a while, but when the year turned to 2077, the NCPD's finances took a plunge again by 17% and as a result, Mayor Lucius Ryan started to get involved, trying to come up with a new solution to what he claimed was the police problem. And here he would go on to bring in corporate security firms to help police Night City instead. Security firms such as Arasaka, Kang Tao and even Biotechnica. By the mid-2077s, crime was still at an all-time high, helped massively thanks to Jerry Falter's corrupt ways of dealing with gangs and dangerous criminals. Pacifica had become completely abandoned by the NCPD officers. And if they did linger in the area like some officers did, such as Sasha Yakovlev, Bill Mitchell and Charles Wilson, they would be at the mercy of Kurt Hansen and his Bargast officers. And if they were to disobey or go against their wishes, they would be hunted down and killed if the need arose, showing who truly had the power within this part of Night City. But it wasn't just here. Out within the north side industrial district of Watson and the Badlands, the NCPD had no presence as well, mainly due to those massive officer cuts, but also because for the higher ups in Night City, they simply did not care of those areas and just let the people living there deal with it for themselves. If you were to live within Night City in the year of 2077, the best places to live would be within the corporate city centre and Westbrook, with Haywood and Santo Domingo being relatively safe but still pretty hostile. But despite everything listed here about how much the NCPD is struggling now, they still have clear roles for the officers who are still adamant that they can make a change throughout the city, with some serious worries for anyone who might break the rules, especially in the NCPD hotspots. The main cops on the streets would be known as the patrol officers, who would be seen as the backbone of the NCPD and most police forces around the country. Their goal was relatively simple. They would patrol their given sector to enforce the law and try and reduce crime. Split into three sectors, there would be the Beat Patrol, the Traffic Patrol and Cruiser Patrol. The Beat Patrol officers would be the boots on the ground, walking the streets and watching over their everyday public. Originally, these officers would go at it alone. However, due to how high crime is around the whole of Night City, the Beat Patrol now work in pairs to make sure they always have each other's backs in case a gunfight breaks out. Whilst it seems a simple job, it is extremely dangerous, as these simple beat officers will have to not only report minor crimes such as theft or disturbances, but they will also have to try and tackle gangs, corporate shootouts, riots, drug deals, psychos and other forms of violence. Essentially, they have to be on guard all of the time to deal with whatever gets thrown at them. Oh, and there's no backup for them. If there's reports of a gang war going on, those two officers will have to try and deal with it on their own and hope somehow the gangs either see sense or they can take them all out without any help from anyone else. They do have with them bulletproof vests, helmets, cuffs, first aid kits, a pistol and maybe non-lethal launcher with them at all times, so their chances of survival are a bit higher thanks to that. Traffic patrol have it a little easier and actually many inside the NCPD consider it a lame job and if you do get it you are considered the lowest on the totem pole or hated by your higher ups and it's been given to you as some form of punishment. Their job is simple, they manage traffic, give out tickets, watch people speed and that's about it. But the problem is no one likes them, not even other NCPD cops who see them as lessers. Regardless, traffic duty is still relatively dangerous and because of it, they are issued with an armored vest, traffic helmet and a 9mm pistol in case anyone tries to get out of paying a ticket or something else. The last of the patrol officers is the cruiser patrol who are seen as the top ranking in the patrol class. These officers will drive around in their BMW 600 which is known to them as a black and white and if a beat patrol officer is lucky, they will see them and come to aid them 
if they have nothing else to do that day. But with that said, most of the officers won't get involved because let's be honest, they have the luxury of being sat down in the warmth behind some thick sheet metal, so nothing can really harm them. Most gangsters and petty criminals are scared of these officers because of their cruisers and also the fact that they have much better equipment to their arsenal. So if you do see a cruiser charging you down and you aren't equipped with good weaponry and protection, you know you will be in quite a bit of trouble. The next division within the NCPD is the Investigation Department, which is much smaller in scale, but far more higher in stature, with some of the best operatives working within it. These include vice, robbery, homicide, and special investigations. The vice department primarily deals with narcotics, with an emphasis on trafficking, possession, and distribution, as well as other big crimes such as prostitution, gambling, and weapons crimes. The officers have a range of cybernetics that aid them with surveillance and then infiltration. This aids them in their undercover operations, which take place over a span of months. The vice department has managed to infiltrate some very dangerous gangs, such as Maelstrom and the Scavs, in operations that took place in some of the most horrible parts of the city. The robbery department obviously deals with any type of theft, including small household burglaries through to vehicle theft and armed robbery. It also deals with more insidious types of theft, such as grand larceny, fraud, counterfeiting, and embezzlement. In Night City, this type of theft is rife, and therefore a lot of money and resources are poured into the robbery department in order to minimize the damage of such crimes. Like with Vice, the robbery department spend a lot of time on long undercover missions, uncovering gangs and crime networks, but with such high level of theft-related crimes, the robbery department also has a ton of paperwork to do, which is very time-consuming, and not to mention having to interrupt their operations to attend a sudden armed robbery where the police attend quickly, guns at the ready to take down the latest perpetrators. Moving on from robbery, there is then the homicide department. Although this obviously deals with murders, this can come in many forms, including mass murders, serial killers, and the ever-prevalent corporate murders sweeping through the city's competitive businesses. Indeed, the homicide department can deal with around 50 murders a day in Night City, making this department one of the busiest and most overworked, therefore leading to a poor arrest rate and many cases being unsolved and abandoned due to sheer volume and the need to prioritize. With very little being done about homicide, gangs and perpetrators are becoming more bold as they know they can get away with extreme violence. As a consequence of seeing such horrific scenes every day, the offices in homicide have become cold and distant, with many experiencing psychological difficulties as well. Finally, we have the Special Investigations Department, which is also known as SIN. A special investigation is classed as a more large-scale and serious crime than those dealt with in vice, robbery, and homicide, although there is some crossover. For example, a special investigation might also include a mass murder case or counterfeiting or corporate espionage. But what makes these cases special is they have to be a part of widespread and organized crime, essentially cases that are too big or complex for the other departments to have the time or resources to deal with. However, this leads to some discourse between the other departments and SIN, as SIN receives more funding and can often take over a case completely with little regard for the officers that have already worked on them. Moving on from the investigations division, we have the tactical division. The tactical division exists to take over from the investigations department for when a situation escalates and reinforcements are needed when investigating has reached the end of its usefulness. The tactical division is divided into three departments. These are SWAT, MaxTAC, and Riot. I won't be going into too much detail about MaxTAC as I've already done a video on them, but to give the gist, I will just say that they deal primarily with cyber psychos and are officially called the Cyborg Suppression Unit or the Psycho Squad. They deal with everything that is above what the SWAT team deal with. For the SWAT, which stands for Special Weapons and Tactics, they are trained to deal with high-risk situations and situations which involve heavy weaponry that ordinary police officers just do not have the equipment, resources, or know-how to deal with. These are situations such as hostage rescue, shootouts, and sieges. The SWAT department also provides security for high-profile clients or places that could attract particularly nasty attacks and crimes. The SWAT department are equipped with their own special tactical police vehicles and have access to as many combat cybernetics that they could possibly ever need. Finally, in the tactical division, we have the riot department, which is slightly self-explanatory in that they are there to deal with riots, but they have to take a different approach to that of the SWAT department. Unlike them, the riot department can't use excessive force and have to 
pacify situations by other means than instantly meeting violence with violence. The riot department are on call 24 7 for any flare ups in Night City, and they work in teams of 10 riot officers armed with protective equipment such as riot shields and ballistic armor, and crowd dispersal equipment like tear gas, tasers, and non lethal ammunition. Although the main aim is pacification, the NCPD has a policy of if you don't want to get hurt, don't riot, which sounds simple enough to me. Over into the other territories, the NCPD actually patrol the net as well, despite many believing it is only Netwatch who police it. Here, the net security section, also known as NetSec, makes sure the net within Night City is patrolled and kept safe, and that specific city data does not leave that area. This team will hunt down daring criminal netrunners and also just keep regular checks going to make sure everything is up to date and safe. But there is also another side to this group. Here, they have their own netrunners who are part of this organization, who they use to dive into the net to seek out important information about dodgy corporate dealings, gang operations, and also gathering as much information on certain subjects they believe to be part of a big crime within the city. This is extremely rare to ever see, and many of the cops will never get any information from NetSec, but if they do, it will more often than not completely make the case and help lock up the culprits once and for all. The only big problem with this division is the NetSec officers are usually extremely high strung and are allowed into the NCPD without any training whatsoever, which really ticks off many within the force. Being scouted out similar in style to Corp Cops, when these members do join NetSec, they will be given access to top level software and hardware, enabling them to become extremely proficient in their chosen area of netrunning. Without this group, the NCPD's arrest rate would be far lower than it already is. This division really is a sign that despite low funding, they have some of the best equipment and people to deal with the criminals living within. Internal Affairs is another division of the NCPD, but all of the regular officers see them as the bane of their existence. This group of individuals will not investigate crimes going on with citizens, but they will instead investigate the officers if they have been given reports about them committing gross misconduct in the pursuit of their duties or being corrupt, dangerous, or performing any other activities which abuses their position and endangers the department as a whole. For the IAD, they have the ability to completely remove officers once and for all from their duties and can even make up evidence just to get rid of some of the officers they do not like. But most of the time, if an officer is suspended or kicked out of the force, it will be IAD that was behind it. And with that done, the rest of the force, including your own friends and close partners, will know that you are a dirty cop and will never speak to you or work with you ever again, unless they're corrupt as well. The final division is the most boring one out there, simply being the administration, which is key for the NCPD to keep functioning. These guys are just desk jockeys, making sure all arrests and reports are processed and that all evidence has been reported correctly. The only time anyone really wants to work in admin is when they've been involved in a horrifying gunfight, have got injured, or simply just doesn't want to do any groundwork anymore. But if you were to work in admin for two too long, you will never be regarded as a true officer and hold little to no prestige among the other officers in the organization. With all of these divisions covered, it does sound awfully like the NCPD are extremely well equipped despite all of the massive budget cuts made by their commissioner. And this would also be shown within their equipment side of things where, despite once again their budget cuts, the NCPD owns some of the most state-of-the-art equipment to deal with the criminals in the city. This is mainly seen at the high end of the organization where they will own the latest automatic weapons and a Militech M10AF Lexington sidearm, as well as other industry standard weapons. For MaxTac, they have some of the best armor you have ever seen, with cybernetics being a requirement for all of their members, with some owning Mantis blades and arm launchers to combat anyone that gets in their way. The NCPD have also recently procured some of Militech's incredible Centaur exoskeletons, which some lucky patrol officers get given. MaxTac already own these, but with a few police having them as well, it means they can tackle crime much easier, even if there is a limited supply. Not only do they own exoskeletons, but Militech have also sold the NCPD their famous Minotaur mechs, which patrol the city as well with other drones that their commissioner is all for, those being the Militech Wyverns, Griffins, Arasaka Robot RMK2 patrol robots, and Zeta Tech Bombus drones to add to their ranks without having to worry about if they get ill or damaged, because unlike humans, these drones 
drones and robots can always be brought back, meaning it is an endless stream of troops that they also don't have to pay a regular salary. With all of this spelt out about how the NCPD works, you would think that a lot are proud to be members of this team, helping save citizens from the endless waves of crime within the city. But the truth is, every officer is massively overworked, barely getting a wage. In recent years, the wrong type of people have also joined the service just to assert their power on the people of the city, with one being quoted as saying, why did I become a cop? Well, when push comes to shove, I like to be the one doing the pushing. You can push real hard with a hurricane assault shotgun. Some officers still feel like they really can make a true difference to their city and will go out of their way to help citizens in dire straits. But with corruption running all the way to the top and no light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to hitting back against crime, a lot are losing their morale and have just gone straight into the mindset of just shutting up and getting on with whatever they get told to do. To this day, the NCPD still have a pretty strong presence over the Neon City. However, that's not to say they are the only ones that control the streets. That ultimately is the role of the corporations now, who hold so much power that they can initiate crime, handle hostile gangs, and keep the peace with their own militaries and corporate cops. The NCPD technically are a corporation now, being primarily funded by Night Corp. But behind the scenes, both the megacorps of Arasaka and Militech still pull the strings and organize them to do things for their benefit. The force also has a massive problem when it comes to solving its own cases. Despite having so many parts of its organization to fight crime, in the year of 2077, it will hire out mercs who will get the job done for them, obtaining the evidence that is either under corporate jurisdiction that forbid any police presence or is just far too hostile to risk sending under-equipped officers into. But with all of that said, maybe the NCPD aren't the best police force in the world, but they are all that Night City have to try to control crime in the area. Maybe in the future, the NCPD will deal with its corrupt leadership and become a real force for good, and the gangs and corrupt corporations will become a thing of the past for the ordinary Night City citizens. For now though, this has been an in-depth look at the crime fighters of the neon metropolis of Night City. This is the story of the NCPD. I want to say a big thank you for watching this video and a huge thank you to my patrons who allow me to make them on a regular basis, including my small fishes, my big fishes Greg and Anthony, my YouTube channel Wise Ones, Sith Lord 906, Video Gamer 75 and Havig, my Sharks Jason X117 and Wow Such Gaming, and my Megalodons, Sinus and Hazy Thoughts. But that is all for now. Thank you for watching again. If you want to support this channel, all the links are down below where you can get early access and screenshots of my footage collected, as well as some merch. And if you want more lore videos, check out my playlist below and also check out my audio-only versions of these episodes on your selected podcast app, such as Spotify and Apple Music. And if you did enjoy this, please do like, comment, and subscribe to help get them out there. And also big thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this post. Check out all the links and descriptions below. And with all of that said, I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers.